How's it going, everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the FNI RSI CNC DC power supply. If you like to tinker a little bit, you can always use a power supply instead of a battery. For example, if you have some weird battery type and you don't have any more of those, you can connect a power supply to it. This thing can output a voltage anywhere between zero and almost to the maximum of the voltage of the AC power supply that you connect to this. So if this is 20 volt maximum, you can output almost 20 volt on this as well. But I've set it to three volts. If you push a power button on the right side, three volt appears on these leads. A very handy device to have instead of those typical bulky power supplies. You know the type that are in labs and stuff, they're like this big and kind of heavy. If you just need a voltage and up to 150 watts, and if you're not too picky about the output ripple, which can go all the way up to, you know, like 100 150 millivolts or so. If your equipment is not that sensitive, then you can definitely use some of this. For example, like electronic toys, you can use it to power a game controller temporarily for fixing it. The output of this thing uses banana plugs and on the other end are these alligator clips. User manual, the power supply itself. Wow, this is small. There's a flip screen. The outside feels cold to the touch, so it's made out of metal. Micro USB input port. You can power this either with a USB-C power delivery port or a DC barrel plug, five to 32 volts. A micro USB cable, red and black banana to alligator clip cable. You may want this accessory here, which is a USB-C output power brick. Now this power supply amazingly can do 150 watts. Typical single output power supplies can only do up to usually around three amps. This one can do five. So instead of 90 watts, this can do up to 150 watts. The AC adapter here only goes up to 100 watts. This connector is not North American. You can push on this button here and pull it out and maybe just even throw away this connector if you don't need it and then flip this down. It says 100 watts out here and we can connect this to our power supply. This here is an optional accessory, a 100 watt capable USB-C to USB-C cable. Plug this in, select the power delivery input and connect it. Let's turn this thing on. Plug one of the banana cables, plug the other one in here. Set the language first. Hmm, enter English. It shows 20 volt input. If I remove it, it's just gonna turn off. It's not battery powered. So let's plug that back in. It retains the memory, stays on English mode. This is not actually a touchscreen. Here we can set the maximum voltage, amperage, wattage, temperature, and minimum voltage as well. The top has home button, mode button, left, right, and an enter button. There's also this jog dial that lets you change the voltage. So we can change it one one hundredth place, one tenth place, or let's say I wanna set it to 12 volts. I can do that pretty quickly, so that's cool. And then on the right, there's a power button. You push that to turn on the voltage. I have the voltmeter connected to the output and my meter is showing 5.002, so pretty accurate. And if I click stop, it goes to zero. Let's say I want 12 volts right there. And then I press go, it shows 12 volt. And if I decrease it on this panel, 11.99, Six, five. Pretty quick response in changing the voltage. I'm actually having a hard time standing this up at 45 degree angle. It's a little bit heavy and it just plops down. However, it does go straight up, but I kind of want it to go like this. Need something to prop it up in the back. I'll put it against my scope for now. I have a 12 volt load tester here. So I'm gonna do five amps. Holding at a constant 60 watts, I'm going to do a single trigger so we can see the ripple here. At 60 watt output, we're seeing about 138 millivolts of ripple. Do another single trigger. Yeah, 153 here. Reduce the load to, let's say, 3 amps. The ripple reduces to 100 millivolts. Let me go down some more to 1 amp. And the ripple is only 55. So the ripple is going to increase the more load that you have. And if I go really low, let's say 250 milliamps. The ripple is very, very low at around 38 millivolts. The input voltage is only 19.74, so I can't actually go up to 30 volts. We need a 32 volt DC input in order to increase the voltage further. So with the USB-C power delivery input, you can only do 19.54 volts. Let's go all the way up to its maximum then, and I'm gonna increase this to five amps. 
I went a little bit over, so it didn't like that. So I'm gonna go back under. Well, I can only reach 93 watts here. And it cut off just now. So you can only use about 90% of whatever power supply you put into this. We're seeing about 91 millivolts of ripple. So this gives you an idea of how much ripple you're gonna get when you use this power supply. I've ran this for a few minutes. It's becoming pretty stable at 38 degrees Celsius. Let me feel this thing and see how hot it is. I would say this is kind of lukewarm right now, so that's very good. I'm gonna turn down the current now and press run on this. We'll show the DC power. And I like this jog dial thing. It's pretty responsive. We're gonna step down one volt at a time. 18, 17, 16. Look at that. All the way down to zero and then back up. and one tenth of a volt. So very fast granular control on the voltage. You can actually twist these terminals off and thread a wire through there like your normal terminals. This is one mode for the interface. If you press and hold this button, it'll go to the graphing mode. And if you push it again, it'll go back. But their product pages has four different modes. To access those, go to the home button, go to system, change the theme to industrial and exit by pushing the home button again. Now this is just a different format to display the same information. If we press this graphing, the graph looks a little different as well. Just depends on which style you like best. There's also this metering function which resets the energy reading when you open the circuit or when you close the circuit. So when you go back to the home screen, these two measurements will count up when you connect something. If you disconnect it, it'll go back to zero. Or if you prefer, once you close it, it'll go back to zero. I kind of prefer that one because I want to disconnect it, stop it from adding to these values and not reset these values until I do the next measurement. You also have CV here, which is constant voltage. If we turn on the voltage right now, it's at one volt, one amp. If I increase the amperage all the way past one amp, it's gonna try to hold it at one amp right there. And now it's in constant current mode. If I let off on that, See, it goes back to constant voltage. There's six different preset modes that you can set the voltage and amperage. If I press and hold mode, we can access the mode group. I have set mode one to one volt, one amp, two, two volt, two amps, and so on until five. M6 group is six volts, 5.1 amps. So this gives you easy access to different voltages and currents. Of course, when you turn it on to one of them, and let's say you wanna change modes, it's gonna turn off the output until you push the on off button again. And now it's at two volt, two amps. So I'm gonna change to the graph and this will give you the graph of the voltage and amperage. We can change the time base from 0.1 seconds to half a second. And that's just every single time this tickers forward. Decrease this to 0.1. If I push it one more time, it'll say, oh, that's the lower limit here. 0.1 seconds obviously move a little bit faster. And if I really increase the current here, we can see that go up all the way up to five, 0.1 amps. We see the voltage drop down right there and go to constant current mode, kind of let off a little bit. It jumps back up to six volts. If I change to M1 again, it turns everything off. I can just turn that back on real quick. I can also manually change the voltage from one, two, all the way up to 19.6 right there. That's the yellow line here. And then down, up, now the power supply that they sell this with, it's 100 watts. This device can do five amps on 30 volts. So that's 150 watts. If you wanna do that, you may have to buy a separate DC power adapter and plug it in here. Remember to not plug both power plugs in there at the same time. It's gonna conflict and it's not gonna work. It might blow something up. So there's a switch here. You can either say power delivery, which is USB-C or DC which is this DC power plug. Let's check the back of the screen just for fun. There's nothing there. I really wish there's like some kind of little kickstand thing so it can hold it up. You can probably make something like that with a 3D printer, but overall a very nifty little device, very functional. One of the more interesting things is the programmability of this power supply. Usually only the more expensive power supplies allows you to program them. So that's what the micro USB port here, you can connect it to your computer. So this allows you to do various kinds of automated testing, for example, maybe Maybe you want to run it at a certain voltage and see how hot certain things get. And then you step up the voltage like 0.1 volts. 
you run it for another 10 minutes and then you check the temperature again. This would be considered a more advanced function that not everyone's gonna use, but when you do need it and you wanna buy a power supply that can do that, it's actually very expensive. So it's nice that it's included in this already. If you guys are interested in the CNC DC power supply, CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control. Typically CNC is used to refer mechanical cutting systems, but you can just as well computer control the voltage and amperage on this thing. So that's why CNC, I guess. If you guys are interested in this, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time. <music>